Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because I have Zach Ullman today and he is so amazing. He is an amazing business entrepreneur and he has so much experience to share, to show you how to grow your business, how to how to expand. And his his um, tagline basically is be you can have it all. You know, he's he's learned from going from from level one all the way to level thousand, you know, and more. And he wants to show people how they could have it all because everyone can reach their dreams. Your dreams can become your reality. And he's going to show you how. Now, before we start, I just want to give a quick shout out to DMAWorld.com. This is a marketing consultant agency and it's run by a gentleman named Mark. Mark believes that all small businesses should not be scammed by these big marketing consultant agencies. He doesn't want to see your money get stolen from you. He doesn't want to see you get taken advantage. He'd like to work with you and talk to you and show you how you could actually work and grow your business at a reasonable cost and not have to pay a fortune. So go to dmaworld.com where Mark's waiting for you and love to speak to you. Now let's get back to my special guest that I'm so excited. Zach, can you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Well, first off, Stacey, this is, uh, thank you for the opportunity to get on here. And it's just, oh man, we instantly clicked. And so I'm, yes. I'm, I'm thrilled to share what I do. So I'm, uh, the, the quick version is I, uh, Indiana f- uh, farm raised, uh, you know, my dad died when I was 12. I took over the I'm family sorry. farm and I thought that was what I was going to do the rest of my life. And then I graduated high school and I was like, oh, this isn't what I want to do. I want to travel the world. I want to help people and I want to make a lot of money. And where I came from, you know, the natural progression was college and it it didn't feel right to me, but, uh, I started asking around and I started learning about investing and private equity and hedge funds. And I said, Oh, they make a lot of money. I want to do that. Right. And so I went to college and graduated at the top of my class from Indiana university in 2008. If anyone remembers 2008, it was a horrific time to be a finance guy. Uh, I sent out three, 3,500 resumes over about a two year span Wow! and finally got a job at the Chicago board of trade. And then that progressed into working for a valuation consulting firm, which I didn't even know what it was, gained tons of knowledge there about finance and buying and selling businesses and asset valuation, became a published author, reached the pinnacle of what I wanted. And I was the most unhappiest I've ever been. I was just like, oh, this is going to be in the next 40, 50 years of my life. Right. And it was, uh, it was depressing. And, you know, I didn't know what to do. Everyone told me I was on the right path. And then I had a friend that says, you know, hey, come check this real estate thing out. And I started looking at real estate investing and I quit my job, jumped on uh, uh, that. I, <laughs> I, I lived in an RV for a year after that because I was just trying wow. to cut my expenses down. And I started my own business. Uh, you know, became very successful at it, uh, started a community of private real estate investors. And then today uh, we have private equity. We still do real estate. We have uh, we invest in private asset, private businesses and travel the world. And so I have accomplished those three things, travel the world, help people and make money. And uh, it's just, it's a, it's a true blessing. That is amazing. That is amazing. And I know when we were previously talking, you got gotten through so many struggles, but you overcame them. I have spoken to so many people and I've worked with so many people who, you know, they are struggling either because COVID knocked them down and they lost their businesses and now they're trying to rebuild themselves, but they find that the industry they're in is no longer the same. So they're having right. trouble build themselves because now they're they're looking at different industries and they're completely lost because they spent all these years doing specific jobs and now they don't know what to do. And then you have these established businesses that people feel plateaued. Like they have worked so hard to get to this point. They're successful, but they're not reaching the equivalent level that they know they deserve and that their capabilities can make them drive to. So you have people, you know, in that mode of frustration, anger, they just, you know, they just don't know how to move and move forward in a productive manner. How do you have someone, you know, what's your advice for people who are struggling either to make ends meet, to either change their, their jobs, or even just to advance and to move on because you want to do something you love. You don't want to be out there and wake up in the morning and drag your feet and say, oh, 
God, I got to go to work today. And you want to be happy. So I knew I threw a lot at you right now, but maybe. No, it's perfect because I li- I was that guy, right? Yeah. I was the, I was the person you're explaining. And then I went into a business and then I was still that person. Cause I was, I didn't know, you know, I was doing everything. Yeah. And so I was making great money, but man, seven days a week, 16 hour days. But for me now, Right. You know, so it was a little bit better, but there's all this responsibility and I have payroll I have to hit. And it's like, oh my God, I've worked my way into another corner yeah. of not having full self-expression, of not being able to go on my motorcycle trips, of not right. And so it, even though I was working, had my own business, I still felt trapped. Yeah. And so I I'm an advocate of coaching. Uh, I have a personal development coach yeah. and she helps me get on my own way. I've been meeting uh, uh, twice a week for the last five years. I've been in a personal development program for the last 10 years. Right. And so what I've learned is, is not everyone is the same. We're all yeah. unique. I help people of every different background. And so what I do is I have this, this mental framework and I call it vision to reality. Mm-hmm. It's like, and then, so what we do is we take a self-assessment of where are you, right? right? Where are you in your life? What are your skill sets? How much money do you have? What's your relationship capital? What's your time? What's your knowledge? All of these things. Yeah. And then we say, okay, where do you want to go? What makes you happy? For me, it was traveling the world. I just, I had this, you know, small town kid from Indiana. I just wanted yeah. to go to, out there and, and see the world. And for some people, they want to stay at home, but what it doesn't matter, right? And yeah. so we get an understanding of where they're at. Where do they want to go? What's their skill set? Time, money, knowledge, and relationships. We call it the currencies. Right. Because just because you don't have money in the bank doesn't mean you don't have value. And so yeah. we help people find their specific value. And then what we do is we we create a plan, right? Based right. on their skill sets, based on where they're at, based on where they want to go. And the challenge is, is as we were talking in the green room, green room earlier, is everyone's unique. And these these you know, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 programs that are very cookie cutter, follow it my way. This is the way that worked for me. It doesn't work for everyone else. Right. And so what I would encourage you to do is self-awareness. What are your skill sets? My skill set is finance and business. And I, cause right. I love it. And I, I, I crafted, I, I became very skilled in sales and marketing because I learned, I thought finance was going to make me rich. But if you're not great at marketing and sales, there's nothing to, you know, there's no operations to run. Yeah. And so I've, I've, I pushed myself through that, but I was very intentional. Yeah. And so the, the, there's two things in my, in my life that I contribute to my success, success. It's uh, intention mm-hmm. and res- personal responsibility. Yes. And, you know, my coach is always asking, what's your intention right now? What's your intention right now? Right. right. Now, what's your intention? Yes. And then. She's always like, well, how are you responsible for that? And there's days I'm like, how, what are you even talking about? Like, I can't be responsible for that. She goes, well, do you want to be responsible for that? Because if you choose to be responsible for that, then you can actually do something about it. Right. And it was, that was, I remember my, one of my first coaching calls 12, 15 years ago is he, he just wiped the floor with me about personal responsibility. Cause I was blaming yeah. my boss. Yeah. I was blaming everyone else. And he just, I've never been talked to like that. He goes, Zach, right. you need to wake up and take responsibility for your life. You're at where you're at because of who you are and what you've done and the choices you've made. And if you quit blaming everyone else, you're going to get some, you know, he just went on this rant. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I was like, I've never been talked to like that before. My head wanted to explode because of the, the, the tension. Yeah. And I told myself I'm paying this guy, <laughs> right? I'm going to take it. I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to yeah. take it and yeah. I'm going to get through the suck. Five minutes later, my life changed because I had this thought. I said, if I'm responsible for where I'm at, that means I could be responsible for where I'm going. Yes. I don't need the permission for a raise. I don't need a permission. I don't have to wait for anybody to give me anything. Right. I go and grab it. Yes. And, and I just kept running and running and running, being intentional, taking responsibility. And, you know, 20 years later, I'm living my dream life. So it's really, you know, you have to have a mindset where you think big, because if you limit it's that's what it seems. If you limit yourself, okay, uh, as long as I get to this level, I'm good. But if you put in your head, I want to be here. And then that gives you, it seems like it energizes you and it gives you the strength. And as long as, like you said, you have the intention, you know how to, you know where you're at and you know how the steps of exactly what you want to do 
and you kind of organize it and stabilize an objective and a strategy, it seems like you really could elevate to any level because your mindset is saying you can do it, you can do it. So it's really a matter of of changing that mindset, I think. Is that what you're trying to explain? Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, there's this, um, I can't, it's like your thoughts become uh, uh, your reality. It's like yeah. your thoughts become your words, your words become, there's this beautiful quote and I can't, don't remember it exactly. But what I have personally experienced is every time I reach a goal, yeah, it's really exciting. And then I get depressed. Right. right? And so I was, I, I got my dream job excited through the roof. And then it was like, now what? Right. I quit my dream job and started a business. Exciting. Now what? I right. made the money I wanted. Exciting. Now what? I I literally, I was sitting in Dominican Republic. Uh, we were traveling. My dream of traveling. We've been digital nomads for four years. Yeah. And I was sitting down and I was depressed. And my coach is like, well, what's going on? And I said, I just, I'm like, I'm out of gas. I don't want to work. I don't. She goes, oh, you quit creating. Right. Mm-hmm. You quit create, and so I was like, "Oh my god, I did! I did it again!" Right, and so I've just learned. The question is now what? Now right? what? Now what? Because I've learned happiness for me, and I've seen it in other people. Because I, I, I just I've been in this world for so long, of coaching. Yeah, that uh, self fulfillment, like that joy, whatever you call it, for yeah. me and many other, it comes from overcoming something. Yes. Right. And so it's like, I, I got that job. I traveled the world. I went, and I was telling you earlier, I, I go on these epic motorcycle rides. I go on these w- crazy adventures Yeah. for the mere fact of I did it. Right. right? And yeah. so I get to feel that pride. I get to feel that achievement yeah. and that brings self-satisfaction. And, and so I don't care what it is like doing something hard fills your life with joy. If you can accomplish it. Yeah. And so I'm just like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? And right. I've, created, I've created something so big that it's just a, a, a life mission. It's like, how do, how do we end human suffering? Like yeah. that's a, that's a mission that I can spend the rest of my life with. Oh, never me too. For sure. Oh my God. And so that's what brings that. That's what gets me up in the morning. It's like, okay, I gotta get, I gotta get that help. Go help one more person. Go yeah. do one more thing. Go, you know, we have organizations all over the the world. Oh, that's and amazing. it's all based on how can I help people? Yes, yes. Oh, I love that. That's that's been my drive is that passion to help. And I think that's right. what gets my 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 tactful every day is because I'm doing something that I love and I right. love to help people. So it's like right. every day I feel that that surge of energy because. I, I think it's really having a purpose, having uh-huh. a passion and being able to fulfill that, you know, being a, and you don't, and, and you can make those long-term goals and you can make those short-term goals, it seems, but as, as long as you're on the track and you're, you're right. really filling in that passion and, and you're doing that, what you have purpose for that you, you have a purpose in life. I think it seems like that could be your motivation, your drive. to. That's the that. secret. In my opinion, that's the secret to happiness is having a purpose, knowing your purpose yeah. and working every day at your purpose. And so, you know, that's what I love meeting people like you. Cause it's like, Oh, somebody else that gets it. Like yeah. you're sharing your message to the world. You're making a difference. You're writing your 20 books. You're, you're <laughs> contributing to the world right. of evolution Yeah, because we all have to go through our own version of suck. Right. To get to that. Like we have to earn happiness. <laughs> I have to earn it, right? Oh my God. Yeah. I, yeah. I've cried. I've been on the floor crying. Oh, for sure. I, I can't tell you how many times. I don't know. I've where been to there go. with I, you. I don't know what to do. I call yeah. my coach. She says whatever it is she needs to say, get me up, go mm-hmm. back out and get after yep. it. And I've just learned everyone goes through that. Oh, yeah. And the difference between the people that make it and the ones that don't is the people that don't make it, they stay there. Yes. Right. Yes. And the people that make it, pick themselves up out of that and just go get and and play on the the court of life. Oh, so yes. Right. Don't stay there. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But but you got to know, we all go through it, right? Even you, me, like it's a, it's the human condition. Yeah. Right. 
I think it really is. Every time that I move two steps forward in life, you know, at one point in my life, I felt like I got knocked back three times, but it was my right. will. I'm not going to let it get to me. I'm not going to let this stop me. And I right. had that mentality. And it's how did, how did you get that, that strength, that inner strength? Because not sometimes people have all these repressed emotions or, and, or they're just so frustrated. Where did that inner strength in you come from? Like, how did you get that drive for, when you were getting knocked down so many times? For me, it was, I was bullied as a kid. And so my dad died when I was 12. You know, we moved around. Uh, my, my mom was a, a single mom and, uh, and I used to get picked on a lot right. and they wanted to throw me out of school. And I was just, you know, I was, I was, I wasn't, as, I wasn't like, I was a farm kid. I was like, want to go right. out and move. And they're like, oh, you need to be on medicine. You're overactive. And my mom's like, no, he's a kid. Leave him alone. Yes. And so um, it was, it, it started off with, I'm going to prove all of you wrong. Yes. I love I was going to prove all of you wrong. I was a nobody in high school, like, you know, just sort of there, but not there. I got picked yeah. on and I just said, I'm going to prove you that you, you guys said I was going to be a nobody. Watch me. Right. And that just, every time I wanted to quit. Cause trust me, it happened on a regular basis. I was like, they're not going to win. Yes. Right. And then it transitioned to, I became some success. Then it transitioned into, let me show them <laughs> yeah. the next person that, yeah. right. Let me show you it's possible. And so there's something I'm doing. I'm getting ready to ride a motorcycle mm -hmm. from Alaska to Argentina. No way. And, yeah. Oh Cause I love, I, <laughs> and it's like, let me show you. And, and, and my project's called uh, For You and the Kids. I love and, it. And, and the idea is if you're an adult and you gave up on your dreams, let, let me inspire you. Yeah, right? I love it. And if you're a kid, let me show you that something great takes time. This took yeah. me 20 years, right? Yeah. And so I'm, you know, it's probably going to take 12. I, I literally uh, bought the motorcycle. I just went and paid for it today. And so, you know, I'm prepping, I'm going to the gym, I'm eating healthy so I can make this big trip <laughs> and I'm documenting on like, Hey, great things take time. This isn't a microwave society. And, yeah. and, the, and the challenge I see is these, these young people that haven't accomplished anything, they buy these programs or these books or whatever, 30, 60, 90 days of success, and they don't get the success. And then they yeah. start self-defeating themselves and they think yes. it's them. And then they just quit on life. And right. it's like, so I, I want to inspire people life is great and it's hard and that's the joy of it. Yes. Yes. I love it. I love it. And that's so true. Like we live in a quick, quick society. Like everybody wants everything right away in this new generation right. and nothing happens right away. It's right. baby steps. I think, you know, from my own perception and, and you have to work at it, you know, and these, these mm -hmm. programs that they put out there is just a bunch of bull, you know, it's oh, just, they, I think they, it, they get me, they get me riled up because I, yeah. I, I see, cause people want, like people want a great life. People yeah. want to be healthy. People want a, a great marriage. Sure. People want money in the bank. Yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, I see these people selling these things and it's, uh, you know, it took them 15 years to get it themselves, but they're selling the context con concept yeah. that it can be done in 30, 60 days. And, you know, and to me, you know, I, um, uh, I think it lacks integrity. Yeah. Right. I, mm -hmm. I you know, I think we got to be honest with the people and so, uh, set the proper expectations. Right. So when, when they don't hit it in 36, 90 days, they don't think they're a failure. Yes. I agree. I agree a hundred percent, you know, because I, I feel like, you know, people have to understand that all these things you just mentioned, you know, these are the the stepping stones to success. You know, right. you're going to go through your ups and your downs. You're going to go through points where you've accomplished your goals and then you feel stagnant. Well, what next? I just done what it. Next? You know, yeah. and then you get that stuck mode. Like, I don't know what to do, you know? And it's like, it's really like creating that, you know, mental strategic plan in your head of what your purpose is and where you want to see yourself. Where do you want to see yourself in three months? Where do you want to see yourself in nine months? Where do you want to see yourself in three years or 12 years, you know, and, and just giving your idea in your head and directions do change, but at least okay. you have a, a guide or, or a sense of of where your journey is headed. And then if there are pivots and your journey takes you in a different direction, and if it's a good direction, keep following it, go for it, you know, but you have but to, but you have a, a baseline. And so yeah. what I tell people have your baseline and then, you know, people come to me for advice. And right. I, I say the same thing. My coach says, I said, does it align with what you're committed to? 
Right. Because because I don't know if it's good or bad, right or wrong for you. Right. Where are you going? Right. And then I'll tell you if it'll help you get there sooner or 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 if it takes you off course. Right. So that's why I think it's so important to have the destination in mind. Because yeah. if you don't, you're going to say yes to stuff that doesn't get you there. Or you're just going to say yes to everything. And not, I, I used to be one of those, you know, I was yes to everybody. Yeah. And Me too. I, I was the same right, way. It, it, at, at the cost of my own future. Yeah. And so, but today I know exactly where I'm going. I, I, I have it planned out with my coach. Mm-hmm. I know exactly who's going to be there, you know, and then it changes, like you said. Yeah. But I know, but when a, an opportunity comes into my life, and I get to say yes or no, I go, does it align with what I'm committed to? Yeah. Is it going to, uh, is it going to get me to the, to the next check mark in my life? Yeah. If it does, I say yes. If it doesn't, I say no. And it's really simple. I love that. I like the idea that does it align with what I do? And is it going to take me to the next step? Because sometimes yeah. people I see with clients of mine, they get pivoted in so many different directions. Oh, it's, uh, I could do this. <laughs> And I could do that. Yeah. Could, like when I, when I first got in, in real estate uh, investing, that was sort of the uh, uh, break into the entrepreneurism. I spent 18 months going twice a week to my coaching stuff. It was a community before I did a deal because I started off with thing A, then thing B. And I was, it was hard. I didn't want to talk to people and I had social yes. anxiety. So I just kept changing mm-hmm. thinking it was going to be different. And right. every one I got, the, the stopping block was for me, I don't want to talk to people because I'm afraid of them. Right. And so I had to get through that fear and I just, I just stayed in one direction, yes. one focus. And that's when I had success. How did you break through that fear? Because that's a big barrier in people's life is breaking through the fear. That's a very hard thing because people, you know, sometimes fear takes over people's lives and they, they are so scared. They, and they don't know how to break through that fear. What's your advice I, uh, about that? Oh my gosh. So we were talking about this. There's so many things I have, but um, for me, when I was, you know, I have different levels of, of it. And so when I was, quitting my job and, or try, you know, transitioning out of my job into entrepreneurism, I had to drive 200 miles every Thursday and every other Saturday to go to my meeting, my entrepreneur meeting, real estate investor meeting. And it sucked. I had to drive through Chicago traffic. I had a car, an old Saturn that, you know, the tires would go flat, the radiator leaked. I had no air conditioner, you know, it was, and, um, every time I, and, and I was afraid of people. Yeah. And so I said, I know what happens if I don't go. And right. I was just so disappointed in that life. Yeah. I, I was just so upset with the life I was living. Yeah. And I said, if I don't get in that car, nothing's going to change. Right. Nothing's going to change. And so I got in the car and I just drove. And so I, I started thinking about what happened. Cause most people aren't connected to what happens if you don't do something. Right. Right. Yes. They're, right? They're like, what happens if I don't? And so most people think of, well, what happens if I do something? Yes. But they're not present to the opportunity that's lost by not taking action. Right. And, and, and then I just started reading uh, personal development bu- books. I started uh, just surrounding myself in this context of personal development. Yes. Um, and, and focus less on my skill set because I was highly developed in my skill set of finance. Yes. But I was poorly developed in the world of um, people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) In self, in self discovery. And so I just spent a lot of time there. And what I learned was we're all the same. We were all horrified of people. Most of us there's, you know, there's, um, and so I've just self self help books, however you want to call them, just really, understanding myself and how we act as humans. And I go, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, oh, they're equally as afraid of me. So if they're afraid of me and I'm the nice guy and I open up the conversation first and I recognize that I'm nervous, they're nervous. We can all, and it just started talking. Yeah. Wow. You know, that, that's so true. You know, we, we tend to even outgoing people, you can be, you can be very outgoing, but the fear of rejection the fear okay. of, of what ifs, those what ifs yeah. in the back of your head. You know, a lot of times, even I'll catch myself sometimes, you'll know, stop yourself because what if, what if, what if, oh, you sorry. know, 
And it's like, it's breaking through the, those, those little things that can really make you succeed, you know? And, and I think that's a great idea. Those self-help books, you know, go into specific author, authors that are really authentic and sincere right. and not go into an, uh, uh, you know, a book that's going to try to sell you on something, but go into an mm -hmm. author that truly develops their time and energy in helping the human being become a better human being. Yeah. And then, you know, in the context of what if, um, you know, I've been through so many programs and in, in personal development and it's, it's my, it's my life right now. Cause I'm, I also, I, I get coached and I also coach others. Yeah. And so <laughs> it's funny. I said, I, I was joking with my friends. I said, my life is a training and development program. <laughs> I, I, I am, you know, some people are like, well, I don't want to do that program. I'm like, I'm in a program right now called yeah. life. And I'm like, oh. Oh, there I go again. I'm starting to doubt myself. Oof. Yes. Right. And it's just like that constant self-realization. There I go again. Yeah. And, and, and when you said, what if it was like, for me, it's like, well, what if it does work? What if it does work? Right. What if it, what, you know, cause we've traveled, uh, yeah. one of my goals was to travel. And so, uh, I'm in Colombia right now and, and no, I don't speak Spanish. My wife is Puerto Rican, so she speaks Spanish. And so right. every time I go out, like, I have no idea. Like, cause I'm just living in these worlds and we lived in, we were in Bali and Thailand and yeah. Oh, and, awesome. And, and, so all, you know, not a lot of English speaking spaces. Yeah. So every time I go out, it's an adventure. Yeah. And it's, it's easy for my mind to go, well, what if I can't get around? Yeah. And so today it's like, like, well, what, what if I, what if, what if this person could help me? What if I could figure this thing out? And so yeah. it's, it's the context of the questions that we ask ourselves. Right. And so I really work intentionally. Yeah. On asking myself the right question to get the answer that I want. Yeah. As opposed to asking the question that I know will lead me to a disempowered personal self. Right. Right. Oh, God. but it takes work because wow. the because the natural uh, the natural human condition I think is to go disempowered. Yes. Right. Naturally. Yes. Right. Well, what if Naturally. it doesn't work? And what if I lose all my money? And that I mentioned, I, I moved into an RV for a year Yeah. With, with the idea of, well, if it doesn't work out, I have this RV paid for in cash and I pay rent. I pay the electricity bill for my friend. Right. So I went and I said, I'm not like, I'm not quitting. And in the back of my head, it was like, well, what if I fail? Right. I, it's, it was still there. It never goes away. Yeah. And I, I just acknowledge it and say, you know, I, I have just little things that help me acknowledge it and, and don't feed it. Can you share some of that acknowledgement? How do you, you don't feed into it? Cause so many people feed into it. I even find myself feeding into it at times, you well, know, I've, to I've, pull myself out. Yeah. And so I've learned, uh, I learned I'm not my thoughts. Yes. I love that. I love I'm not my thoughts. Cause we have some weird thoughts. Right? Yeah. I, know I do. It's like, it's Every like, human would, being does. It's, I would never entertain that thought. Yeah. Right. But it, they come in automatically. Right. Automatically. And so I just, this is why I tell myself, I say, oh, thanks for sharing. I don't right. want to accept that. Thanks right. for sharing. I don't want to accept that. Right. Thanks for sharing. That doesn't align with what I'm committed to. I love it. And so it's just like, but I, but I used to think that that thought was me. Yeah. And I've learned it's not right. I, right. And so if you can, if you can, and this is a skill set, because when I first started meditating, mm -hmm. I would, I would fall asleep. I just kept going <laughs> and going. And I had this brain that was just a beast. It would <laughs> run me. Right. Yeah. And so I, I was able to shut my, all those thoughts down and it was through these processes. And then I started being able to meditate and really, you know, go deep in, yeah. inside of that. And so today I, it's, it's a, it's a practice like anything else in life. Right. And so, uh, the other thing I've really learned that has helped me with this, um, and this was a world uh, that I lived in called, uh, integrity. I took mm -hmm. an, uh, an entire, uh, seminar on, on integrity and they said, the reason you have that crazy mind is because you have uncommunicated, uh, uncommunic uncommunicated communications. Right. Uh, you have part, uh, things in your life that aren't complete. Mm -hmm. You have, uh, all of, you know, all of these things that lack integrity in, in that context. And so I started cleaning my room. I started, you know, uh, apologizing to the people that I was a jerk to. 
Right. You know, all of those things that were in my mind, I took yeah. personal responsibility for it. I love it. And, and I completed it. So it didn't have a space in my mind. Gotcha. And so I see people out there in the world, they cheat, they cheat on their spouses and they think it doesn't affect them. Right. Uh, they cheat on in, in business and they think it doesn't affect them. Right. Uh, they do incomplete work and they think it doesn't affect them. Right. But it's always on their mind. Yes. And if it's, if, if it's always on their mind, there's no space for the next right. thing. Yeah. And so I spent a bunch of time completing things in my life to get it out of my mind. Yes. So I could create the next thing uh, uh, intentionally. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Because no matter what you do, you always have, it's just humans. We have a sense of guilt. You could repress that and try to shove it. Oh, totally. You shove it down. You can feed it with alcohol. You can you yeah. could feed it with food. You can whatever. And I, a guilt was a big one for me too, yeah. right? Because I was a, I, I want to make people happy. I'm a yes guy. Right? Yeah. And so, but what I was saying yes to them, I was saying no to me. Right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, I, I hate being put in, in being put in uncomfortable conversations. Situation. Yeah. But what I've learned now is if I don't say it, it'll be on my mind. Okay. Right. And then if it's on my mind, there's no space to create the next thing. Right. Now, I think that the caveat with that is you, you don't want to go around being a jerk to people. No. Because some people think, well, he's authentic and that gives him an excuse to be a jerk. Yeah. Right. So I've learned how to have authentic, compassionate conversations. Right. Because the people that um, I'm working with, they haven't had 20 years of personal development. They don't get right. coached twice a week. They yeah. don't read the same books as I do. Right. And if I think, if I think they should know better, well, that's, that's shame on me. Yeah. Right? that's not taking responsibility for my, who I am. Right. And so my, my, my coach calls me on all the time. She goes, you know, how, how could have you made that gone different? Yeah. And we look, Oh, I could have said this, which, right. And so you just to not feed into this beast called self-destruction or, or feed into the, the garbage thinking. Yeah. And I like that. And I, I like the point that you made that, you know, sometimes, and I saw myself falling into that too, is that, you know, you think the person is on the same level as you. We have to, for, we have to remember everybody that is on a different level. And sometimes we might talk to somebody and try to open them up to a different way of looking at things. But if they're not, if they're not um, reading or, or, or learning things like where we are, they're not going to see things from the, the same perspective. And even their, their, the, their childhood and the way they grew up might what alter it if they don't fix it. And 70% of the nation is dysfunctional. So that shows yeah. you right then and there that most people don't fix it. They repeat the behaviors. So, right. you know, you can't really communicate with someone the way you think they're going to understand you have to speak on their level and say okay how is this person you know how are they you know really metabolizing this information in their brain and then try to figure a way to communicate with them on that right sense. what's the filter uh, sort of like how it's like what's their filter because i have my yeah. filter and, and i fully realize that just because I say it that way, there's somebody that's more conscious than I am that has more time and more, ex, you know, more experience in this world of life yeah. and personal development. And we can only receive information at where we're at. Yeah. And so I can give it from where I'm at, but if, right. But if, right? And so I think that's the world of, especially in business is why, um, you know, it was uh, Warren Buffett had this uh, experience. He, he offered to uh, work for Charlie Munger mm -hmm. uh, for free. And Charlie says, uh, the price, your price is still too high mm -hmm. because he just didn't have enough time in the seat. He doesn't have enough experience. Right. And there's no other way to get it than just to go do the thing. Yeah. Like, go talk to the people, go read the books, go swing the bat, go do whatever it is that you want to get developed in. Right. And then you actually have some context and some feedback to, to, for the feedback loop to understand what the next step is. Right. And that's the journey, right? That, that, the, the, the self-discovery, the, um, the, the, the struggle or however you want to, the problem solving, because then you get, when you do accomplish your goal, at least for me, it's like, then you get pride. Yeah. Did it. Yes. Did it. Yeah. I love it. I love it.
Now, if you had to give people advice, what would be some suggestions? If you know, you've already given tons of advice in this conversation, but is there anything that stands out to help people grow in their business, you know, and, and to give them, you know, anything that we didn't really tap onto or something that you want to emphasize a little bit more? Oh, so I'm, I'm a big advocate of frameworks, like mental mm -hmm. frameworks. And so my mental framework is where am I? Where do I want to go? What's my currencies, time, money, knowledge, relationships. And then, because once you have that, it's just a matter of doing the work. Yeah. Now the challenge with that is, is if you've never been somewhere, you don't know the map, right? Yeah. And so I would say work with a coach. I'm just such an advocate of coaches. Oh, me too. Now, right. And so um, now the next question is, well, there's a lot of coaches out there, which one's right? Mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of people portray themselves as coaches, but they've never, uh, they've never gone through the suck themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? And I, right. And so it's like, I tell people, I said, if your coach doesn't have a coach, consider they're not a coach, right? Because how can they coach you on life? And what are they accomplishing if they don't have one, right? They're, they're, they have the same human tendencies as yes. you do. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, my coaches, I, uh, I've paid a lot of money for coach. I, the mo most expensive yeah. coach I ever paid was a thousand dollars an hour. Yeah. And I wasn't ready for it. Right. I was not ready for a thousand dollar hour coach. And today I still, like, I still don't pay that much. And so when you're first starting off, I have the, I call this the mastermind matrix. Again, it's a mental framework Yeah, is, you know, specifically in business and real estate, before you go and hire that coach, you have to figure out, are you committed to this? Because yeah. if you're not 100% committed, don't even waste the money. Yes, right? exactly. And so if you're new to this, I would say, go to YouTube, go to Google, start understanding what you what you want to get into. Yes. And so I'm just going to use real estate because that's what I help a lot of people with. And so if you yeah. want to get into real estate, go actually see what it takes before you spend the money on coaches, before you go spend the money on education. Go to the free YouTube, go get as much of the baseline information because yeah. the information that these coaches are going to uh, share with you, it's everywhere for free. Right. In my opinion, what a good coach will do is help you put the puzzle pieces together that you learned. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can go out there and learn and do all of this stuff. And then you go, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this. Yeah. I don't want to do this. Then you, then you didn't waste a bunch of money. Exactly. You something. And so if you want to keep going, you're like, oh yeah, I'm committed to this. I'm committed. Then, you know, go buy an entry level program, you know, yeah. two, three, four, 500 bucks, something that focuses more on uh, information and process. So you can understand what a successful process looks like and then move, you know, move down the progression of a group mastermind because everybody, not everyone, most people that I talk to think they need this one-on-one -on -one back and forth coaching. Yeah but they've never experienced a, a, a group mastermind and there's way more value in a group, the right group mastermind. Yeah. And it's, and it's way more affordable because obviously it's one person. And, and so, uh, but I, I think depending on where you're at in this and one-on-one and, and -on -one obviously is the last one yeah. I tell people to focus on because it's so specific. And as we were talking about earlier, I paid the dude a thousand dollars an hour Mm -hmm. But I was only capable of receiving a hundred dollar an hour information. Right. Right. And so mm -hmm. just again, but if you understand where you're at, then you can, you know, you can really understand what the next thing is. And so I would say, you know, work your way up that, that matrix of free yeah, entry level, right? See if you even want to do this. And the, and the last thing I would say is if you can't understand what I'm about to say next and it scares you you will not have success in any industry. Exactly. And, and, and what that is, is everything is sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything is sales and marketing. I talk it to these is. people, they want to make money, but they don't want to talk to people. They don't want to promote. They don't want to sell stuff. And I said, where does the money come from then? Yeah. And it was a hard realization for me because I hated sales. Right. Because my natural inclination was, um, used car salesy. Like I am going to have to give something, yeah. uh, get somebody to buy something from me. Right. As opposed to make a contra positive contribution in their life. Yeah. And so if you hate sales and marketing, 
that's one thing I can guarantee you're not, you're not going to have any success because there's going to be no value exchange. Exactly. Right. And so if you don't like it, go find someone else that's good at it and, right. and, and, you know, uh, be good at something else and add value to them. But it's that constant value exchange that, yeah. uh, you know, and so people spend their life and this is where I was for a long time doing really deep work, but not promoting or not selling or not marketing. Yeah. And so I was just broke, but I was really smart. Yeah. Right. With no practical experience. And so I had to break through that again, fear of selling. And then it just, you know, it just, but I was passionate about it because I was yeah. really there to help the people, not just to sell something. Right. Right. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. And we talked about, you know, the fear factor. So like you gave a lot of good advice, how to break that fear factor earlier on, Yeah. you know? So I, I think that that's so true. And, and, and I even found myself when I was growing in my business, I was great as creator and helping people. But when, when it came to the marketing part, I was a little bit, I guess, introverted, or even though I was an outspoken person, the fact of asking for money, Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. The, yeah. I was in, in the Midwest. And so it was like, we don't charge people. We <laughs> do it because we're a good person. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like I will give my life away. And I saw money as bad. Yeah. Right. And I saw money as bad. I thought it as I was ripping someone off. I saw it. That, but, but when you really look at the mechanics of money, Exactly. Right. And you really break it down. I read, I re I've read so many books on money and just like the, the, the esoteric theoretical concept of money. Cause that's what yes. it really is. Right. For, versus this, um, thing that people just think it's, a, it's from a dollar bill. No, that's a yeah. representation of something. Cause I used to be a, a valuation consultant. And oh, so okay. I had to, I had to understand value and I would, I valued human beings. Yeah. I have valued software. I have valued some of the most craziest things you can think of. And I was like, yeah. what is value? Right. And why is it worth this? And so right. this mental gymnastics, and it's so clear to me 20 years later. Yeah. Right. But, you know, I had to go through that mental gymnastics of understanding it. And yeah. even today, I, I just keep right. Like I just uh, took a position and I threw some crazy number out there. I was afraid to say it. And she said, yes. I was like, oh. <laughs> like right but it was again my own mental constraint of yeah. what am i worth what am i right. what's my resources worth and i'm like oh i am worth that I yeah am. right and and i think delivering on what you said right because if you deliver on what you said and you, it's an equal value exchange right so it's so true. I, I even had a, a, a speaking coach and he speaks nationwide. He does very well for himself, but he talks about the first time he asked, he asked for a very large number, but he's been doing it. He has great experience. He, he learned, you know, he has a very good skill set, and he asked for that amount and they said, yes. And he almost fell out of his chair. He said, because nice. he just, you know, he couldn't believe they were actually paying, but he, in, in real, in reality, he was worth it. But in his own right. eyes, you know, he was afraid to ask for it because he still had that fear factor. Am I worth right. it? You know, but when, right. as soon as they said yes, he was like, oh. and then he realized, oh, my God, you know, all, you know, because sometimes we don't value ourselves enough. We don't give ourselves credit, you know, and, and that's what yeah. people have to do, I think, too. Yeah. And it's a constant, uh, you know, it's a constant conversation. And, you know, it, a lot of it for me, it, it, it's my my crowd that I hang around. Yeah. Right. And so I've, I, I have circles that give everything away for free mm -hmm. and I, and I fell into that. And then I was right. like, I have other circles that charge for everything. Yes. And I see their life and right. the people that give everything away for free. Yes. They don't have a truly fulfilled life in all aspects of their life. That's very true. Because, because their finances aren't in order. Yeah. So they 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 can't afford the healthy food. They can't afford that trip. They can't afford the things that would make the whole aspect of life fulfilled. Yes. But they have that peace that is fulfilled. Yes. Now the rich people, you know, the people that charge for everything, you know, that that doesn't automatically mean your whole life is fulfilled. Yeah. But what I've noticed is I have the money for healthy food. I have the money for gym memberships. I have the money for my coaching. Right. For the things to help me 
go through that process of self-development to create that happiness. Cause yes. you know, it, it's, it's uh someone told me the other day, they said, happiness is not a destination, but a direction. I like and that. So, right. So I'm headed down that happiness direction. There's just, it just keeps getting better. The yeah. more I work at it, the more, but I need the money to buy my coaches. I need the money to buy my healthy food. Right. And so to, to, you know, and I need the money to hire employees to, to share my vision and mission with the world. Yeah. And so I just created that again, it's like, you have to pay me because I like it, it only works if you get paid. Right. Yeah. And what would you tell those people in panic mode when, when they don't see the finances coming in and they're starting to panic and, and their, 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 their life seems like it's spinning in circles. What would you advise them? Um, I've been there. <laughs> so okay. When, all right. When, I, when I'm there, this is how I got through it. Right. It's, what's the worst that could happen? Right. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, I'm going to go sleep on my mom's couch. Yeah. Well, I could do that. I could do that. Right. I've done it before. I, I mean, I, oh, I got to go sleep on my, my friend's uh, couch. I could do that. Right. Oh, uh, I'm going to like, it's like, okay, bring it to reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the worst? Like get right. out of your mind, get out of the story of life. Yeah. And bring it to facts. Bring it to facts. What to reality. is yeah. the worst that could happen? Exactly. That's why I bought, that's why I bought that RV. Because mm -hmm. I went through the mental gymnastics of it. I said, I'm going for this. I yeah. Said, What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is I don't have a place to, to, to sleep. Yeah. Cool bought an RV, paid for it in cash. <laughs> right. Okay. Solved that problem. Right. Exactly. Right. And so now it's like, well, what's the worst that could happen? Well, I have a place to stay. I can make, I'm a resourceful dude. I can make a couple thousand bucks a month to, to, to eat, to yeah. pay my, right. I said, right. You're so it's sure. just a matter of time. Yeah. Cause I have shelter and I have food. Right. Right. And so I, I but I broke it down to facts and what we yeah. do is, is we, we start creating stories mm -hmm. and then we get entertained and enrolled by those stories. And then we think those stories are real. Yes. 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 And, and, Stay and on get, reality. In, in, the, in the romance uh, or, or maybe not the romance is the wrong word, but like, mm -hmm. I, 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 me. we have to separate what's reality versus what's your story about reality. Yeah. Because what we'll do is we'll find, um, uh, you know, if we, if we have a disempowering story, we'll find things in our life that yeah. support the disempowering story. And then we'll go, see, I told you, mm -hmm. I told you it wouldn't work, but the, the story, the, it's a story. Yeah. And so if we break it down to like, well, what happened? This is what happened. Right. Yeah. And then the question is, well, what did you, what did you make it mean? Right. And so the meaning that we make of life is us. Yeah. What actually happened is the lady looked at me. I don't know. Right. Yeah. What actually happened was I got fired. What right. actually happened was I have $2,000 in my bank account and yeah. my mortgage is 1500. Right. That's the reality. Exactly. Exactly. What you make about that reality is either the disempowering or the empowering. Right. And so I just bring it down. Obviously, trust me, I have a coach that helps me with this. Yeah. And and so I tell people, I said, if I if I had a thousand dollars left, I would give it to my coach because there's a reason I only have a thousand dollars left. Right. And and I want her to coach me out of this. Yes. And, and I see and I see one of the a lot of uh especially with new entrepreneurs uh that 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 don't have a good coach. My coach is super qualified. Yeah. Um though the the first thing they cut is their coach. And I was like, oh my God. You're not, you don't, you have no idea what you're, you're not going to make it. And then they don't, they, they, they fall into that, um, the, the hole that they, that they, they dug, right. Yeah. I forget who said it. It's like, you can't get out of the hole you dug yourself. Right. Right. Cause if you could, we all would. Right. Yeah. And so, so that's why it's so important to listen to podcasts. Like you have Stacey and, and you just keep flushing all that garbage out of your mind. Yeah. And filling it full of other stuff that is aligned with what you're committed to. 
Oh, I love it. Yeah, that's a perfect answer. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Now, tell people some of the services that you do and where they can find you. Yeah, so we do, you know, over the years, I've uh, I've learned a lot. And uh, where I've ended up is, this was always my dream of uh, buying and selling businesses. And so what we do today is we have a private equity firm where we, uh, we help people start scale and sell businesses. And then we take you know, we can do that for a fee or we can help people, uh, yeah. partner. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, the, the main business I'm focused on right now is, uh, financial services. And so we, we can teach people, but where I've really moved to is, uh, consulting people that already know how to make money or right. people that have assets. And I say, Hey, let me take responsibility for your finances because I'm right. really good at it. And so we help people with, uh, making more money, scaling their businesses, removing themselves from their businesses right. so that they can have that fulfilled life and not work seven days a week, 20 hours a day. Like it seems we help people with tax strategies, bookkeeping, uh, life insurance, those, all of those financial, anything financial services Yeah, my company does. And what we do is we help you put it together because what I've learned is if you go talk to a, I use this analogy. If you go talk to a website developer, your right. problem is your website. If you mm -hmm. go talk to a life insurance, well, you need life insurance. If you go talk to whoever you're talking to, yeah, your problem is whatever they have to sell. Exactly. And so we've taken it and I say, uh, I have a financial model. We do 10 year projections. I say, okay, let's look at, again, same framework. Where are you? Where do you want to go? What are your resources? And then maybe that financial product is good for you, but it's not good for the next person. Right. Maybe real estate is good for you, but not for the next person. Maybe right. whatever it is, but we have it all. So I don't yeah. have to sell you with what I have. You, we can work with your professionals. I'm just the interpreter, the financial exactly. interpreter. So that's, that's what uh, I spend my time with now. And so we it. have a, a website called learn and grow rich um, with the context of, you know, if you want to achieve the next level of happiness, financial, whatever it is, you have to learn something. Yes. Uh, and, and so uh, again, learn and grow rich .net is where you can find us. That's excellent. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. I, I love this. This has been such a, an amazing podcast. And I, you know, we've talked about it. You, you had mentioned that you're very interested in coming on, maybe doing a series because you have oh, so love it. valuable information to share. And I would love to do a series with you. And we could talk about different, you know, areas where we could help people advance in their, in their business, in their, in their obstacles and how to get over the hump so they can reach their goals and how, how they could turn their dreams into a reality because everybody has the power to turn their mm -hmm. dreams into a reality. It's just learning and having someone guide you through it. And that's it. That's it right. I would love it. And so I'm, I'm excited about it because there's yeah. just so much there's so it's simple, but there's so much to it. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. And that's with yeah. anything in life, you know, yeah. and you know, we're going to break it down. So we make it easy for people to understand and we're going to take them to the next level because you have the ability to get them there. And I want to share your knowledge with the world. This is amazing. I thank you so much for being on this podcast. This has been an amazing time and I can't wait to have you back on. This has been great. Thank you so much, Zach. Thank you for the opportunity, Stacey. I'm excited to come back. Yes. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.